How you doing? Tonight, we're going to talk all about James Figg. James Figg was born in Tame in Oxfordshire in 1684. Throughout his relatively short life, he only lived to be 50. He fought 271 official bouts. Of those, he lost one. He always claimed that he'd been ill when he suffered his loss. And the results of the rematch do go some way to backing that up. Now, when he was a child, he grew up in Tome. We know very little about his early life. We know he was one of, I believe, seven children, the youngest. And he was skilled at fighting at a very early age. What we need to bear in mind is that at this point, pugilism as a sport, boxing as a, as a pastime, didn't really exist. There's a record of a boxing match between a tradesman and a footman in the, the early part of the 1600s, um, but we know very little about it. So we know that the term boxing was around at that point, but as a sport, pugilism didn't exist. Fig fought initially at the Greyhound, uh, a public house in, in town, and became so well known and so locally famous that he ended up building a small amphitheatre within the Greyhound pub to fight in. After a while he realised that he would be better served moving to London and did. He moved to the area now known as Marylebone. To give you a little bit of context about Fig, he was not a boxer. If anything, Fig was a swordsman. The Masters of Defence were, had been disbanded some 80 years before Fig was born. But the name, the Masters of Defence, had been adopted by uh, professional gladiators who kind of stole the terminology of the Masters of Defence and carried on playing the prize. But instead of the prize being a, a test of skill and knowledge and ability, it was purely a competition. Um, sometimes these were done for money-making purposes and sometimes they were done uh, almost to settle um, duels of honour. Uh, they were often to first blood, but as often they were fought to submission. However, in 1700, we have the first record of bills being posted before a fight, rather than just the entire company marching through the street announcing that a fight was going to take place. Bills were posted that there would be a four-man competition and that these four men would fight to see who was the best. And this is the first record we have of a, a more modern understanding of the term prize fight. One of the things that Fig did when he moved to London was that he became a regular at Southwark Fair. Now Southwark Fair was a, a huge gathering that happened for two weeks every September. Obviously, as the name would suggest, in Southwark, in, in what is now London. And Fig, according to, to Egan, set up a great tiled booth. We're going to talk about that later. Just that definition deserves a video of its own. We'll get there later. And Fig used to sit in his booth, openly challenging any man to come and fight him. Uh, he's claimed to have said, Ah, uh, here I am, Jemmy Fig from Tame. I will fight any man in England. And he did. He never turned down a fight. And he rapidly gained a very, very impressive reputation. Now, he was, as were most of his contemporaries, a stage gladiator. He was following in the footsteps of people like Buck and Miller. Uh, Buck was a very famous swordsman. Miller was less famous at the time, but we know more about him now because he began the process of writing his own treatise on backswording, uh, and some of the plates still survive. One of the things Fig did with the money he made from his, his displays of fighting and the winnings of uh, the gambling was he built himself his own amphitheatre, again this time in the area known as, as Marylebone, um, and there he put on fights. He effectively became both a promoter as well as a fighter. And just to, to round things off nicely, he also became a coach. 
and he taught many other people to fight. One of the people that he became quite close friends with was the famous artist Hogarth. Now there's some disagreement as to whether whether some of the some of the paintings of Fig that are attributed to Hogarth are actually his. The most disputed one is what's known as Fig's business card. It looks very much like it could be Hogarth's, but the British Museum are now saying that it's probably a, a copy and that it wasn't Hogarth, it was someone done in Hogarth style. But that being said, we know that Fig appeared as a character in several of Hogarth's more famous pictures. There's a very famous picture of Southwark Fair, and in the bottom right corner you can see Fig sitting upon his horse, holding his back sword in his hand, interestingly in his left hand, with his famously shaved head. Uh, also in plate two of the Rake's Progress, uh, one of the characters standing in the background holding a pair of quarterstaffs is said to be Fig as well. Now interestingly in this image he's clearly wearing a wig. There's a painting that floats around that is said to be Fig, yet I've not been able to find any proof that this is actually James Fig. It may well be, and if you know better than me, please let me know. I'd love to find out that this is actually Fig, and I'd love to know where this painting is. Anyway, let's talk about one of Fig's most famous fights, and that's the rematch with Ned Sutton. Ned Sutton was a pint maker from Gravesend and a famous and successful stage gladiator himself. He was a skilled swordsman and fought with a, a number of weapons. He challenged Fig because at this point Fig had decided to start calling himself the champion of all England and Ned Sutton had taken exception to this. So the two of them fought several times, but the last fight is the one that we actually have a record of. We know very little of the first two. We know that Sutton won the first, Fig won the second, and the final deciding fight, well, that's, that's this one. Sutton challenged Fig to fight him with all weapons that he knew, and Fig agreed. He effectively said, I've never turned down a fight yet, and I'm not going to turn down this one. They stepped out onto the stage and they fought with steel backswords. Now, for those of you that don't know, a backsword is a single-edged, straight-bladed sword with a complex hilt that protects the hand. And the idea was that they would fight to first blood. A number of passes occurred and no one was getting the advantage. Sutton had reach and height, but Fing was a much more stocky, strong and muscular fighter. One particularly fierce exchange happened and Fig's sword broke and one of the fragments of his sword hit his arm, drawing blood, leaving a fairly clear blood stain on the white fabric of his shirt. Uh, however, it was agreed that this did not count as first blood because it hadn't been Sutton that had delivered it. So, with fresh weapons, they fight again and Fig delivers a beautiful feint and as Sutton falls for the feint, Fig redirects his blade and slices him across the shoulder as cleanly as a surgeon. Fig wins backsword. The second bout was with the fists. Now, it's worth saying at this point that this was pre Broaden's rules. There were no rules. Effectively, the two men were to fight without weapons until one of them submitted. It's also worth mentioning that the agreement beforehand was that for one of them to be acclaimed the winner, they had to win all three bouts. So at this point, Sutton had lost a bout. He could never be the winner, but he could stop Fig from claiming the championship. The two of them fought. Sutton was fast and his reach exceeded Fig's. When they were closed, Fig had the advantage. When they were at distance, Sutton had the advantage. But Fig managed to throw Sutton heavily onto his back. They sat and had a drink and refreshed themselves and started fighting again. There were no timed rounds and there were no timed breaks between the rounds. They just fought 
and then they had a rest, and then they fought some more. This time, however, Fig tried to close, but Sutton was ready for him, and Sutton managed to pick Fig up, carry him across the stage, and literally throw him to the floor in front of the umpires for the fight. As you can imagine, this annoyed Fig quite a lot, and he went in swinging wildly, but missing completely and repeatedly, and Sutton caught him with several clean strikes. Uh, Fig again managed to throw Sutton heavily onto his back, and Sutton came up, and this time he was angry, but Fig had got the measure of his man at this point. Sutton was tiring, he, he was winded from hitting the ground, and he was really struggling, and Fig effectively hit him at will. The, the two fights are more, and Sutton manages to throw Fig almost into the crowd, but Fig closes again on Sutton, and this is where Ned Sutton supposedly made his fatal mistake. Well, fatal's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. As Fig closed, Sutton reached up to grab his hair, to pull his head back, to grapple him away, completely forgetting that Fig had shaved his head before the contest. Fig batters Sutton and throws him to the ground and literally pins him down, shoulders to the ground, in very much the same way as a modern wrestling pin, until Sutton declares he's had enough. Fig had won the second bout. The third bout, however, was quarterstaffs. This was Fig's preferred weapon. He was renowned as a staffman. The two fought briefly for a couple of minutes, neither one managing to get the advantage, but the damage that Sutton had taken earlier had clearly taken its toll. His guard wasn't as good as it normally would be, and Fig hit him hard on his knee. Sutton collapsed to the ground, could no longer fight. Fig had won all three of the bouts and was acclaimed champion of all England. That wasn't the end of his career though. He spent a lot more time marketing himself and his amphitheatre and promoting other fights. And he did things in a more unusual way. He put on fights between people who you wouldn't expect. Um, they put on fights between women, he put on fights between men, he put on fights between groups of people, he put on wrestling matches and sword play and all sorts of different fights and he made a lot of money from his amphitheatre. But what he did more than anything else was he created the sport that we have today. One of his most successful students, Jack Broughton, went on to win the championship and at this point the era of the stage gladiators was effectively over and public sentiment was changing and weapons were becoming less and less of an entertaining thing to watch. People were more interested in unarmed combat and that's when Broughton came into his own. But that's, well that's another story and I think it's one we've told. So thank you for listening to this very very brief and cursory look at Fig's life. We're going to make a few more videos about him. We're going to talk about his great tiled booth. And we're going to address the, the debate that's going on as to whether Fig actually boxed. I believe the evidence is very clear. Um, but I'll save that for another video. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you aren't already subscribed, if you're new to, the, to my videos. And hit the like button. And if you visit the link down below, you can buy a Stories of Greatness t-shirt and that will support my channel and help me make more and better videos. Anyway, for now, take care. I'll see you soon.